everybody. Welcome back to Best Life and Beyond, and happy birthday, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, uh, the Disney movie. 84 years young today. We're celebrating on the day that we're filming this. We thought today would be a good day to go to Carthay Circle. A lot of people aren't familiar, which we were actually kind of surprised, but a lot of people aren't very familiar of why Carthay is so significant to Snow White. Right. We also have a newly updated attraction at Disneyland, so we figured let's celebrate Snow White's anniversary at Disneyland and uh, really do it up and have a good time. It's an important anniversary because without Snow White, the success of the Disney company, hard to say, at that point it was it was kind of a you know do or die. Uh, that needed to be a success and it was, and it saved the company, and then many more hits came after that but it's a big deal and, and Katie's saying about Carthay Circle we'll share the history with you uh, throughout the day uh, as much as we can uh, about Carthay about the ride about the the movie itself uh, but first things first we have a reservation at Carthay right we do we're gonna head into the lounge we're gonna get some kind of a little bit of uh, I guess you'd say hors d'oeuvres if you will yeah. maybe some food and some drinks um, but before we get into doing that, please make sure to take a second and subscribe because if you think we're going to have fun today, you don't want to miss the rest of it. It's going to be a good time. So real quick, take a second and subscribe. It's kind of like buckling up your seatbelt, if you will. Oh, yeah. Because we're going to have fun. Are you ready? I'm ready to snow white. Are you? I am. And like we said, we're going to start our day over here at DCA, Disney California Adventure, where Carthay Circle resides where we have a reservation and then there right here in the hub at DCA is the Carthay Circle replica. I'm not sure what scale that is because it's definitely smaller than the original. We have one also at Hollywood Studios in Orlando. It's a little bit smaller than that. That one is the biggest of the replicas and on this historic day there were 30,000 fans that couldn't get tickets who came down to just celebrate the event outside the theater. It was five bucks to get in. The advanced ticket sales apparently exceeded any other pre-sale of any other movie that had ever been featured at the theater. The other really important part about Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs movie from Disney was that it was the first traditionally full-length feature animated film ever. Wow. And Katie, you'll be interested to know that it is based on a Brothers Grimm 1812 German fairy tale. Well, Snow White is German, as am I. There you go. So I like her already. <laughs> One of the crazy things about this movie is that Roy, his brother, and Lily and his wife tried to talk him out of doing this. Oh, man. Uh, it had never been done before, so people really couldn't see. Right. Uh, even during the production, uh, Hollywood was kind of a buzz saying that it was Disney's folly. Uh, what originally was going to be a $250,000 budget turned into $1.4 million. But wow. guess what? It paid off because yeah, it, did. it grossed like $8 million. Wow. And and it took the company to uh, heights that it had never been before. But that was the one that really... That's our princess was born! Yeah, he even had to mortgage his house to fund this thing uh, and get an extra loan from like Bank of America and he had to show them the film to convince them like, look, this is going to be legendary. One of those things about Walt Disney's perseverance that I respect and, and live by. On well, the vision to see that like this is going to be successful when not everybody was seeing that, you know? No, everybody thought you're, you're kidding yourself, this is not going to work, and guess what? Snow White was born! Something else that's really cool is that this whole DCA revamp of the Los Feliz, Los Angeles area really harkens back to the original Hyperion Studios that was on Hyperion Boulevard at Griffith Park Boulevards, where just down the street was the Hyperion Bridge, which you see right there, immortalized here at DCA. Because you gotta remember, this was the neighborhood that Walt was living and working in when he created and produced Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. So what a perfect place to have Carthay Circle here at DCA. There's even a plaque to commemorate it here on the replica at this theater on the night of December 21st, 1937. Walt Disney introduced the world to the first full-color feature-length animated motion picture, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. The rest, as they say, is history. So we're pulling up to the premiere. This is our valet right here, valet parking. Yeah. And if you're taking a taxi, you got to go over there to where it says taxi. Oh, yeah, yeah. Valet, you get dropped right off. This is where the limos um, get dropped. Yeah. Obviously, we're pulled up here. Yes. Um, now, we're going to be eating at the Alfresco Lounge. Sometimes, if you're lucky, if you could get a reservation for upstairs. I didn't get one, but we're going to check and see if they have a walk-up. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. If not, we're happy with Alfresco. Yeah, at least All we're in the good. Carthay building. Yeah. And even though this entire section of DCA is kind of modeled after the Hyperion studio era in Los Feliz, this film gave Disney 
the four and a half million dollars that they needed to build the Burbank studio, which still exists to this day. So, like I said, it fueled a lot. Uh, later, Pinocchio and Fantasia, and many more hits, obviously. But this was the one. This was such a crucial movie right. for the success, even of Disneyland being here. I don't right. think Disneyland like so would much, be here. Yeah, this like this was that launching pad yeah. that Disney needed, and it's just like it's crazy. Today was the day that it premiered. Like it all came to like fruition. It all happened right now today and it's just wild. There is a good energy in the air today too. There we, is. Like we felt it when we woke up. We we're like it's the anniversary of Snow White. That's why. That's what it is. Snow <laughs> White I presume. And I have really good news. We were able to get a walk up reservation. No um, way. A couple parties had ended up canceling sadly oh, which is good for us. Oh my gosh. So we get to go upstairs and the reason we wanted to do that because you could do al fresco downing dining downstairs that was a which is great there. but upstairs it's just beautiful and we recommend it to everybody to come up to carthay especially if you're a snow white fan a classic the photos in here it's yeah. gonna blow your mind just hang on to your uh, hats and glasses because this is amazing oh this is good all right darling i've arrived to the premiere okay judy garland she was actually at the premiere. And Shirley Temple, wasn't she? I don't know if she was at the premiere, but I know that she awarded Walt with the, the, little, the Oscars uh, because they'd given him, uh, you know, a single trophy like most people get. But then there was they the made little mini, little mini ones for each of the dwarves oh. that she presented uh, to him. And All there's right. footage of that. Yeah. I'm Julie, Judy Garland today. Oh, boy. Let's go into the circle. Yeah. All right. Now, when you walk in, you're immediately greeted by these photos. Look, there it was on opening night. Look at the, the Klieg lights, Katie. There they are. Oh, there they are. And you can tell how much bigger the actual Carthay Circle building was. Right. There's kind of an aerial shot of the location. Wow. Which, now the theater's not there anymore, but this configuration in the street is still there. You can see it on the map. It's oh, wild. Really? Isn't this so cool? Look at this. Oh, the police pass for Snow White. Isn't that crazy? World premiere, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. That just gives me the chills. Like, legitimately, it gives me the chills. That's so cool. And there's a great couple of photos of the interior of the actual theater. Look at that. All right, our table. Our table is ready. We haven't been upstairs in a long time. This is the lounge. It's a beautiful lounge. Nice bar. We're going to head up the stairs to the dining room. Good call. There's Walt and Roy with, uh, that was the Alice comedies right there. That was what they were doing before. Right. Yeah. All the feature length animated stuff. There's Walt and Shirley Temple, like we were talking about, Katie, with the little mini Oscars yeah, for all yeah. the dwarfs, right? And that's at the Walt Disney Family Museum, too. I believe it is. All right. We haven't been in this dining room in quite some time. This is very special. Oh, wow. Look at this room over here. Thank you. All right, we got a sweet little table for two. Look at this overlooking. You can see the tree out there. Oh yeah, and check out this menu. Look how cool this is. Take a look at the. Uh, it's the holiday menu. Holiday dinner menu. California ahi poke. That looks good. Cheese stuffed arepa. Hey, it's cheese. I'm down. Winter vegetable soup, artichoke parmesan fritters, winter endive and apple salad. The old main course is ravioli with braised short rib, pomegranate glazed pork chop, lemon chill shrimp, Mary's chicken salad, yuzu marinated salmon, cedar roasted duck breast. And then the old desserts, tangerine orange posset, if I'm saying that right. Warm dark chocolate truffle cake, that's probably what we're gonna get. Hey, I'm seeing warm cheddar rolls right here. That's what I'm saying. Those are definitely aren't the other the biscuits, but those are some rolls. And, and a Yukon gold buttery mashed potato. Oh, in the, boy. In the interest of science, we're going to try the Parker House rolls. We have to. science, we need to know. Now there's an extensive wine list as well as the Carthay classic cocktails. The Carthay Martini, I can, I can vouch for that. There's a daiquiri, there's a Manhattan, I can vouch for that as well with the circular uh, spherical cube. There's an old-fashioned, Pim's Punch, 
the old sidecar. And then Katie, there's some uh, non-alcoholic, the Wild Berry Lemonade and the uh, Twin Bill. So Katie, I've been studying up on my Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs uh, trivia. Did you know another first uh, for this film was that it was the very first American film to have a soundtrack album released in conjunction with the movie itself. First time. Wow. Yeah. Oh gosh, Snow White, the gift that keeps on giving. She uh, broke down walls. If you ever are lucky enough to come and dine in Carthay, there is more photos and pictures that than we're even able to show you. It would take up this entire vlog. It's almost like a museum. Yeah. Um, we'll show you some of the highlights and things. I mean, you're gonna flip, but um, just to you know, let you know, we're not able to show you every single artifact. But trust me, what we will show you, incredible. Yeah, there's a there's a picture downstairs that when we leave, I want to show. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm looking at one right now. It's a whole big uh, ticket. It's a blown up version of a ticket, right? I mean, massive, like like a poster size. Size of the wall. Yeah. I mean, and everybody holding their Oscars. I mean, just, uh, so cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, real quick, guys. We came outside <laughs> with our friend Mitch, who works here at Carthay. Hey guys. We haven't seen Mitch in a long time, so it's it's like a reunion. We're we're very happy to see Mitch. This is a long time coming. It really is. And he he took us out on, on the uh, balcony out here, or the whatever you want to call it, to show us something. For the only place that you can see the Disney Disney California Adventure Christmas tree. The Disneyland Christmas tree, the train station, and the castle all by standing in the same spot. Oh right. my right? goodness. Look at that! Oh, that's so cool! Isn't that cool? I've wow. never seen that one. You're right. You said, I, I'm going to show you something you, you've seen before, but not all at the same time. That was a perfect way to put it because, yes, I have seen it before. I have so you can see the tree. There you go. So I can see all three. Four, actually. Well, yeah, because you got four. four. You got yeah. the tree, the train station, the other tree, and the tip of the castle. Wow. All right there. Dude. That's a, that's a view. Wow. How incredible is that? And you got to stand right here. Right? Right near the edge. Oh, that is incredible. Thanks, Mitch. Glad to Appreciate see it, man. you guys again. Happy holidays. Oh, happy holidays, man. Oh, so happy. If you're ever here at Carthay, Bother him, be like best life in Beyonce. Yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> All right, I got myself a glass of Pinot Noir from the Willamette Valley. It's a, a brand called Argyle. Nice, uh, nice little celebratory wine for for Snow White. Cheers, Katie. Cheers to Snow White and Walt Disney. Now, since everybody's probably wondering, is this looks like a really fancy restaurant, uh, Disney etiquette, you're okay to wear your ears. There's people wearing Mickey mini hats. You're wearing your hat. You can be pretty casual in here, so if you happen to get a last minute reservation, don't stress that like you're not dressed up super formal or anything. Right. They're very casual here at Disney like this. And, you know, take it from us. Don't worry about it. If you get a chance to get in here, come and enjoy yourself. That's more important, 100%. Yeah, this isn't the California Grill over at Walt Disney World where they have a very semi-strict uh, dress code, no hats, no open toe shoes. They're just trying to, you know, keep it a little bit classy over there. But in this case, uh, here at, at Carthay Circle, you're good to go, so cheers. All right, what do we got here? For science, we are gonna try the Cheddar Parker House Rolls. Will they be as good as the biscuits? I'm doubt. I'm very doubtful, but so far I'm already really liking that good bread pull. They said a lot of the flavor is in the butter that's served with it. Very soft. We've got a really nice cheese baked onto it. And here's the butter that it comes with. There's some pine nuts. This is very interesting. Very curious how this is gonna taste. Some garlic, gives it a nice orange color. Very interesting. Hey, that's pretty good. Mm. Citrusy, that's where the orange. Mm. Because we once, we're in Orange Grove, right here. Mm -hmm. that's, that's very interesting. I like it though. Even without the, even without the um, butter, it would still be really good, but this is good. It's no cheddar biscuits, but this will do. I always like to try it without stuff first. Mm. I like that. Alright, now try with, which is it's pretty um, flavorful. 
Now with the butter. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, that's good. You're right. Very citrusy. Mm -hmm. A very slight, slight uh, kind of uh, spice to it, but very slight. They're really nice. It goes well with the cheese or the cheddar. You don't need it, but it actually it definitely enhances uh, the experience. And like I said, the fact that we this once was all orange groves is very appropriate. So, all right, the main courses have arrived. I got the short rib ravioli. Looks like it's got vegetables. Looks amazing. Uh, I, I think I made the right choice. Oh man, that is amazing. Whoa, the flavor, super, there's a little bit of citrus in there too, like it's just a hair, but amazing full flavor. I made the right choice. Oh man, so good, so good. Double thumbs up. I only had one bite and I would have this again. I already know I would. <laughs> oh, and I love the presentation of your plate, Katie. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? It's a, got a yuzu sauce, which is like a citrus. Okay. And it's a salmon with some greens down there. It looks like some cloves of, uh, or sorry, they're mushrooms. I thought that it was garlic for a second, but yeah, it looks like this is gonna be flavorful, healthy, and delicious. Oh my gosh, perfectly, perfectly cooked. Let's try and see if we can get everything. Oh, the everything bite. bite. Mm. Mm -hmm. So good. Perfectly cooked salmon. That is amazing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, this is the warm dark chocolate truffle cake. Festive for the holidays too. Look at the little little designs on there. Oh, and you can tell it's warm because the chocolate thing has melted. Oh boy. There's also some pistachio involved in here. Yeah, this is like a pistachio, like a whipped yeah. pistachio. I am here for it. All right. Let's cut into this. Katie is the chocolate connoisseur, so let's see what she I'll thinks. I'll tell you what I think. Okay, is there anything in the middle? Okay, a little bit of something in the middle there. Give it a try. Mm -hmm. Oh, baby. Yeah. You're going to love this, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it rich? 10 out of 10, I would eat that again. It's light. Oddly, it's light. That is delicious. Wow. That is flavorful. Oh, wow, that's good. I know, it's got like a lot of flavors in it. It's, but it's very rich. Yeah. Cocoa powder rich, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. And it's light, like you said. Mm -hmm. There's a lightness, but then a richness mm -hmm. at the same time. And you were debating on whether to get this or not. I was like, well, we get something in the park. If you don't order on a, on a menu where there's only two desserts and one of them is chocolate. Yeah, something's wrong. I wasn't going to let you uh, slide on that. You're amazing. <laughs> Before we leave, we just wanted to take a look at a few of the different historic photos. In the building, we've got Julie Andrews, Walt Disney with his Oscars, the Sherman Brothers, and then, of course, this interior of this rotunda uh, that is Carthay Circle on the inside, beautifully painted. You know what else I notice is that there's a, a set of curtains in front of the dining room. It's almost like a movie theater where they close the curtains to keep the light out. Hidden Mickey. All right, so we're gonna take the elevator down. Our hostess told us we have to check out the elevator because there's some photos in there, so let's do it. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's some photos of the lobby, it looks like, in here. Wow. Those lights are a little bit similar to the ones they have here. Yeah, yeah. You see them on the ceiling right there. Yeah. Oh, here's the curtains again. Oh, yeah. I'm convinced that that's like movie theater curtains. And there's one of my favorite photos of Walt and Lillian and someone that I don't know who it is, but I love that photo. I have to say, some of my favorite things, I know it's not really like Snow White related, but the goddess herself, my idol, Julie Andrews. So many photos of her in here, like you pointed out, and I just, oh, 
Carthay. She was there that night. This is why we love Carthay. There's just so much rich Disney history here. It's insane. It's amazing. And if we had smell vision uh, we could tell you that the smell coming from... From those tacos down here in the lounge. It's incredible. And you know, you were right. The lights do look the same. Yeah. Those look very uh, reminiscent of the fixtures that they had there. Right, right. And earlier when I was speaking of the Hyperion studio where Snow White was produced, there it is. That is a, uh, a great photo that I've seen before. And the sign that is recreated in DCA, that sign, the original, they never knew what happened to it. I think it just, just got trashed or something like that. But that there's a kind of a version of it over in uh, DCA, but that is the original Hyperion studio right there. Griffith Park Boulevard and Hyperion Avenue in Los Angeles. And check this out. Ironically, it was on a Tuesday in 1937. It's a Tuesday in 2021. That is, that is crazy because the days of the week change, you know, throughout the years. But that, it, today is a Tuesday, so that's really cool. Wow. And I would imagine that it was probably at about 7.30 or 8 o'clock at night, and it's about 7.10 right now. I feel like we're right on the cusp or round about the time when, when that movie premiered for the very first time this 84 me, years I'm ago. i all choked up. <laughs> 84 years ago. Wow. And without Snow White, none of this would be possible. So I don't even want to leave. Sadly, we make our way out of Carthay. What a great way to start this celebration of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. So good. Oh man. Take my mask off, we're outside. Woo! Yeah, this, uh, what a, what a great start to our Snow White celebration. Good way to celebrate. Now we're gonna make our way over to Disneyland to uh, Snow White's Enchanted Wish, which originally was Snow White and Her Adventures in 1955. Opening day attraction for, for Disneyland. Yeah. Uh, changed in 83. We'll go over some of that stuff uh, when we get over there, but uh, we are headed to Disneyland. And to get to Disneyland, we gotta cross under the Hyperion Bridge replica, very small version of the Hyperion Bridge, but that was the bridge, well, that is the bridge that connected Atwater Village and Los Feliz right by the original Hyperion Studio. So it had significance and that's why it's here in DCA. We have made it back to Walt's original Magic Kingdom on our way to Snow White's Enchanted Wish. And when you cross through the right tunnel, if you haven't seen, there's a poster for the Enchanted Wish, one of the newer attraction posters in the tunnel. There it is. And of course the magic provides us with Minnie Mouse. Oh my gosh, Minnie, looking fabulous. Oh no, you, you are. And yet another beautiful night on Main Street, USA, Disneyland, making our way towards Fantasyland, but we just have to stop and appreciate this Christmas holiday look. It's just, uh, it never gets old. Okay, we came over to Snow White's Grotto. Now, if you haven't been over here, it's pretty special. Uh, not only does it have statues of Snow White, the Seven Dwarves, and some forest friends, there's a really cool waterfall. There's even the old mine over there, the, the what is it, a diamond mine, Katie? as well as the wishing well that holds a lot of magic uh, involving Snow White as well. And what's cool is that the enchanted fountain, uh, not only does Snow White start singing... The, the well, you mean? Yeah, well, the well will start singing and then Snow White sings. It goes back and forth. But then the little fish come out. It's like a little fish fountain in the water. Down here, right? Yeah, that light up and spit water. It used to be that, like, you threw a coin in and it was... And it was activated that way. I think it's just uh, kind of on a timer now. Now the story goes with these statues uh, that they were donated to Walt Disney by an Italian sculptor, of which I don't know the name. Again, this is just rumor. And that this Italian sculptor had not seen the movie, but he did have a set of collectible soaps in the shape of the princess and the seven dwarves. And they were all the same size uh, in the soap form. So if you notice, these statues, including Snow White, are all the same size. So John Hench, famous Imagineer John Hench, decided to put Snow White further back on top of that waterfall to make her appear to be farther away. And then the dwarves are in the foreground. Just that forced perspective vibe to, to show that they're, you know, different sizes. And the fun thing about the wishing well is that you can actually donate coins and all this money goes to local children's charities. 
cool because we're gonna put in 37 cents. We are, in, in honor of 1937, the premiere date of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, we're gonna put in 37 cents. Is that it? So the fishies didn't do their little dance, but that was still magical, wasn't it? It really was. And if you look above Snow White tonight, we've got a magical moon up there, right through the trees. So it should be noted that the original 1955 version of Snow White and her adventures, as it was called, the opening day attraction when Disneyland opened was designed by Claude Coates and Ken Anderson, who were both responsible for the look that you saw in Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs in 1937. So it was appropriate that they designed the attraction. Although it wasn't as advanced as we know today, it was a lot of wood flats, very primitive. And also there was no inclusion of Snow White herself. Uh, the original Fantasyland, all the attractions, including Peter Pan, were designed so that the guest, the person riding the attraction, took on the role of the main character. So you were Snow White, you were Peter Pan. Although that idea never really resonated with guests, uh, they did make a change in 1983 when they redid all of Fantasyland and included the main characters in those attractions, as well as the very front of Snow White was made to resemble the Evil Queen's castle, as opposed to the medieval kind of uh, flags and banners fair look that they had originally. And then cut to 2019 when the ride received a pretty much a full makeover with the new Enchanted Wish version of Snow White. A little lighter, a little less scary, as well as the story was kind of completed and finished, whereas before it was kind of a cliffhanger where it ended uh, in the 1983 version. It just kind of was left you hanging because now obviously we get True Love's Kiss and they live happily ever after at the end, so it's a complete story now with all new projections and magic that really make the ride a complete story. We love the Enchanted Wish. We think it was a great upgrade. Do I miss sometimes the, uh, the darkness of the 83 version? Sure. It was pretty scary. I, I recall moments actually being in there, the only one in the attraction, probably around midnight, and genuinely being scared. Definitely was a scary adventure back then. It is time for the Enchanted Wish on the anniversary. I see you up there. I see you. Look who's joining the Enchanted Wish. Hi, guys. David Freshbank Disney. What's up, best life? I haven't seen you in a while, dude. I know. Where have I been? Uh, you've been around. <laughs> have you been making gooseberry pies? Gooseberry pies, my Gooseberry. Favorite. We're in search of gooseberry. Gooseberry pie. <laughs> so the cool thing about Enchanted Wish is that we didn't get this until the park reopened nope. Nope. April 30th of this year. Right. Uh, which is funny, you forget sometimes that, yeah. you know, prior to that it was a scary adventure. We used to have the apple here. When you touch the apple, she would cackle. Yeah. Just like that. Now we have a book. Uh, they, they turned her, they turned the, uh, a little dungeon into a bed and breakfast also. They did. <laughs> they did. It's a nice place. It's so lovely in here. I mean, look how nice this is. It's only it's only two ninety nine a night. Yeah. Are those gooseberries down there? Where's the gooseberries? Oh yeah. The gooseberries are in pink. I read. Are you gonna Google is gooseberry banished? Is gooseberry banished? Because <laughs> these plants served as an intermediary host of wine pine blister rust. I would have bet $100 that she was full of it. Apparently, that's a real Gooseberries apparently are illegal. Banned. They're banned. Katie just looked it up. We're all going to move to a state that is We need to go get a gooseberry legal. friendly. A gooseberry friendly state. I Seriously. want to go to a more gooseberry friendly state. This is what a gooseberry looks like. It looks like a grape with a watermelon. Oh. That's no, my those aren't own. gooseberries then. Definitely not gooseberries. Yeah, those are... Uh, they look like uh, they, they do look like little tiny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I thought they were crab apples. All right, we are at the Snow White Cottage. They did such a good job with this. I love it.
that is going to wrap it up from Disneyland Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs anniversary. It was a great celebration here so at awesome. Disneyland. Totally magical. Just, I don't know, there's something so great about knowing that this princess, one of the first Disney princesses, this movie came out in 1937 and it is still resonating with children and adults all around the world. Still has all the magic and we get to celebrate it at Disneyland. So whether it's the anniversary or not, you need to come down here, have a dinner at Carthay, have some drinks at the lounge. Yeah. Get on Snow White, go and see the Wishing Well. So many fun things to do. Yeah, come celebrate the movie that without it, this company wouldn't be where it is today. We hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And we'll see you next time on Best Life and Beyond. Bye bye everybody.